Welcome to the Video Dictionary, where we explore the English language and its history one word at a time. My name is Benjamin Lewis. If you enjoy investigating language, history, and its social and political implications, subscribe for more. And click the little bell to make sure you never miss a word. Now, what does an eggplant, a hovering man in a suit, a pile of poo, and a shrugging person have in common? They're all examples of an emoji noun. A small image used mostly in informal digital communications. History and etymology. First, let's cover some background on the technological problem that helped bring emoji into existence. In English, we have 26 letters with an upper and lower case. This gives us 52 characters plus 10 digits and a handful of other symbols and characters. So, when a computer system needs to represent English in text, it only needed room for about a hundred or so characters to fit everything that was needed for a thorough representation of our language. But not all languages are so simple. Japanese, for example, has two syllabaries, that's like an alphabet, but full of syllables instead of single sounds. These are called hiragana and katakana, or they're both referred to as kana, with around 46 characters in each of them. They also regularly use the Roman alphabet, the same one we use for English, plus they use over 2,000 pictographs borrowed from China. They call them kanji. With this quantity of characters to represent in your communication system, it's going to require much more space and many more places to store these characters than the standard English does. The system that was created for Japanese had more than enough room for all of the kanji characters and the other characters in the language. There were locations left over for more characters than they needed. So a brilliant Japanese software engineer was watching the news and saw the images used by the weatherman to show on screen what the weather was going to be. So there's raindrops and clouds and suns. And he thought, why couldn't we use images like that in our text messages to shorten messages by using fewer characters and representing things with symbols and pictures? Because of the limits of the SMS technology at the time, the the simple messaging system, or I have no idea what that actually stands for. I should look that up. Um, you had limitations on how much you could type in there. So that's where he came up with the idea for emoji. Now, at the time, all of the mobile phone manufacturers in Japan followed suit and created their own sets of emoji. And because of the use of kanji in Japan, the people were already used to using pictures and pictographs in regular language. So emoji caught on fast. Now, meanwhile, the Unicode Consortium formed in 1991 in California was gathering languages and characters from all around the globe to make one unified character set to simplify international communications. When they got to Japanese, they were expecting the kanji to be a larger chunk of the characters, but they discovered that all of the mobile phone manufacturers had created all of the, these other characters, these emojis. The people of Japan were actually using these characters in their everyday communication, so they couldn't very well throw out these symbols when they moved them into Unicode. The Unicode Consortium didn't expect anyone outside of Japan to actually use these characters, but boy were they wrong. After Apple integrated Unicode into their phones so they could move out into the Japanese market and other markets, Americans quickly discovered that they could send smiling piles of poo to each other. And the rest is history. And now we have pillows, toys, and even playing cards, and even a movie about emojis. That's the story of the technology, but I'm here to talk about the language. 
The word emoji is what we call a borrowing. It's a word borrowed from another language. You might think that it comes from emoticon, another word in English that shows emotional icon or emotive icon. But that's not quite the case. The funny thing about English is that most of its words are borrowings from other languages like Spanish, French, Latin, and many others. And after World War II, America's relationship with Japan got a lot closer, and Japanese began borrowing a lot of words from English, and we absorbed some of theirs in return. They were mostly cultural words like bonsai, sushi, teriyaki, and so on. Emoji is just like those words directly taken from Japanese. Now, like I mentioned before, one might think the origin of the word is similar to emoticon, but that's a purely English construction. And an emoticon refers to when you use a colon and a parentheses to create a smiley face. But that's not actually the case. The word emoji is much more closely related to the Japanese word kanji. Kanji is a compound word of the characters for China, or hon, plus ji, the Japanese word for character. Emoji, similarly, is a compound of the word for picture, e, and the word moji, meaning character, just like at the end of kanji. This word is more closely related or more uh, similar to the English word for pictogram. That's how we, that's the word we use to refer to kanji, this type of character that the kanji are, or pictograms representing a whole thought or a whole idea. Prescription and commentary. Now, in my personal life, I'm trying to learn Japanese right now, using various websites and programs and even a podcast. Mainly, I wanted to learn Japanese because I wanted to learn a language that was very different than English. And so far, I've found that in Japanese is very different than English. One of the main ways that Japanese varies from English is its use of pictograms called kanji. These symbols represent whole concepts in a single character. And these characters could often mean more than one word or concept depending on the context they're used in and can change how the words are pronounced or used. Native Japanese speakers have always been used to using pictographs in their language. So adding small images indicating weather or moods was only a small step for them. Now, if there is one thing English and Western civilization is really good at, it's incorporating the best parts of other languages and cultures into its own, especially English. It's very good at that. And I believe that is what's happening now with emojis. English is incorporating a form of pictographic text into our language and our text communication. Our language is always changing, and it's actually really exciting to watch it happen in a significant way within our lifetime. Now, I realize not everybody likes emojis, and some people think their inclusion is degrading our language. I prefer to think of it as expanding our methods of communication, expanding the ways we communicate with each other. But if you disagree with me, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your perspective on this idea. Thank you for watching the Video Dictionary. If you enjoyed this video, let me know by leaving a like and subscribing. And if you don't want to miss a word, click the little bell. If you'd like to support my little dictionary project, head on over to patreon.com slash lexicacographer. Link is in the description to help support the show. You can also visit my website where I have an archive of all of the content from my channel, plus transcripts of my history and etymology segments at lexicacographer.com. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and until next time, keep on learning.